On June 18, 2017, 16-year-old Patrick Cooper was participating in a running event. Unbeknownst to everyone around him, Patrick would later become the center of a tragic incident, a reminder that nature isn't always benevolent. Hit that like button and subscribe right now. Welcome to Final Affliction. The city of Anchorage has the most population in the entire state, making it the chief commercial center. It lies at the base of the Chugach Mountains, a section of western North America's Pacific mountain range entirely contained inside the U.S. state of Alaska. The intrinsically delicate balance of the urban pillars in the foreground meeting the unsullied mountains of Chugach is the perfect symbolism for this city, a place anchored between nature and culture. Naturally, the people here have a heart for nature and love experiencing the beautiful landscape. Birdridge Mountain is one of the most popular sites where people can bathe their senses in the brilliant ecosystem. It is located southeast of Anchorage along the Turnigan Arm of Cook Inlet. It is home to the Robert Spur Memorial Hill event. This annual 3,400-foot uphill race climbs through the coastal forest to the tundra atop Birdridge Mountain where people get an excellent view of the Turnigan Arm and the surrounding mountains. On June 18, 2017, Father's Day, the Robert Spur Memorial Hill Climb was celebrating its 29th year. It was a relatively cloudy day in Anchorage. Since the early morning, the sun had been overcast by the dull gray clouds. It loomed over the Cooper residence. Patrick Cooper and his mother, Katrina, had just finished their preparations for the race. Katrina carefully instructed Patrick on where to go, what to do, and how to stay away from the highway. With all the details ironed out, it was time for them to head out. It was 9.30 a.m., and nothing was seemingly out of the ordinary. Patrick was excited to participate in this race, as he was naturally competitive with all the school activities he had joined. Running this trail with his mother was extra special. Patrick would be joining the juniors division of the race, while Katrina would be in the adult division. It was a few minutes before they began. Patrick and Katrina, along with the other participants, had just arrived at the starting point. Unbeknownst to the Coopers, this event would change their lives forever. Katrina switched her phone to airplane mode, saving as much battery life as she could while the race was ongoing. Patrick was beside her lightly springing with eagerness as he was having the time of his life. When Patrick was born at the Providence, Alaska Medical Center, he spent nearly two months in the neonatal intensive care unit. Born a premature baby, Patrick had a lot of problems and disabilities. Eventually, the doctors discovered he had a seizure disorder, autism, and ADHD. After being released from the hospital, Patrick spent another two months with his birth family, However, his parents, being disabled people themselves, eventually realized they were inadequately equipped to care for Patrick's special needs. They came to the difficult conclusion of putting him up for adoption. Eventually, Patrick met the Coopers, and Katrina and her then-husband Dave were immediately awestruck at the young boy's bright energy. Although Patrick had challenges, he did not let them stop him from enjoying life. He was a bright character. He liked to run and often competed with the fastest kids. He fished, intertubed at the lake, and was an immense hockey fan who would watch the games with his family. Chess and Monopoly were big in the Cooper household, eventually turning Patrick into a massive fan of the games. Patrick may have experienced some difficulties at school. However, he did not let that affect his progress. At the time of the race, he had just finished 10th grade. Although a little bit gassed out, Katrina and Patrick reached halfway up the grueling foot race. The 16-year-old boy beamed a smile toward his mother as they approached the end of the junior version of the race. Reaching the end, Patrick had to say goodbye to Katrina for now. The boy looked at his adoring mother and gave her another beaming smile. Katrina put her arm around the boy, calling him her little mountain goat. She told him they'll see each other again later, since the adult's finish line was atop the steep mountain slope. After one last look at him, Katrina said goodbye and proceeded to head up the trail again. Patrick began to head back down the trail along with the other kids. Unfortunately, this was the last time Katrina would see her son alive. The downhill trail was a less challenging route, but it was by no means easier. 
However, the other kids accompanying Patrick made the time pass by more quickly. They chatted and laughed. They celebrated that the hard part of the race was already finished. The carefree atmosphere among the kids was infectious, and Patrick lost focus. Coming upon a confusing junction along the trail, Patrick decided to take a different turn away from the other kids. Unfortunately, it was a wrong and fatal turn. Here, nobody was walking alongside Patrick. He noticed the vegetation got denser as he trudged along the route, not connected to the race circuit. He continued to descend the trail and things became quieter. As the laughing of the young participants faded slowly in the background, the hush of the Alaskan wilderness became more prominent. Patrick could hear the rustling of the leaves as he stepped on them. Unwittingly walking farther down the trail, Patrick heard sounds in the bushes. At the same time, he finally realized nobody was walking with him anymore, prompting him to pause and attempt to rejoin the group. However, they were nowhere to be found. Suddenly, from a few feet away, Patrick noticed something hiding in the bushes, a massive black silhouette. The 16-year-old boy unintentionally crossed paths with a black bear. The creature blocked the path Patrick came from, effectively separating him farther away from the crowd. Patrick paced deeper into the wrong trail as the bear sized him up, stalking and following his every step. The young boy felt the dread looming over him. Patrick paced his steps more quickly and began to reach for his phone. Alarmed by the dire situation, Patrick texted his mother and brother but got no response from them. As he watched the bear carefully, Patrick left out a few voicemails. The bear eventually made its move and charged toward Patrick. It advanced with such speed, the distance between them seemed nothing. Patrick was sweating up a storm as he sensed the danger he was in. Fully panicked at this point, Patrick turned his back and decided to make a run for it. Unfortunately, it was a big mistake. The bear's senses quickly turned predatory. The worst mistake a person can make when encountering any predator is to attempt to outrun the creature. Predators operate more dangerously when they know their prey has no chance against them. And with his back against the bear, Patrick was an easy target. With its big and powerful legs, the bear pounced on the young boy, mauling him and quickly dragging him away. The creature used its powerful paws laced with two-inch claws to hold him down. The bear began biting Patrick, chewing at his legs, face, and arms with its three-inch canines that could snap bones in half. The young Patrick had no chance at all. Back at the starting area, Katrina noticed something was amiss. Patrick was not there when he should have reached the meetup point before her. Patrick's brother Jesse informed her of what happened. After receiving the distressing call from his brother, Jesse notified Brad Prikoski, the race director, about the situation. Brad immediately alerted race crews to search for Patrick. Katrina was understandably shocked, and she immediately joined in the search. Unfortunately, after a few hours, some responders were able to locate Patrick. He was already lifeless, and the black bear was still on top of him, guarding his kill. Immediately, a Chugach State Park ranger shot the bear in the face. However, it wasn't enough to kill it, prompting the creature to get away. As Patrick's remains were airlifted from the scene, the Coopers could do nothing but weep at his horrible fate. We are all better people for the honor of having him in our lives. He will be dearly missed, said Patrick's family. The authorities scoured the area for the bear and were able to kill a 250-pound male black bear. They noticed it had been shot with a slug in the face, concluding they got the bear that killed Patrick. Experts weighing in on the case deemed the incident a rare predatory attack. The bear was not defending its cubs or a kill. It just so happened that it saw Patrick as an easy target, taking yet another amazing person to meet their unfortunate final affliction.